surgery short case inguinal hernia. You are examining last. Please examine this patient in guinal region. Please examine this patient groin area. One of the top most secret area. Definitely you have to take consent before examination. Not only here, each and every surgical case. Before examination, you have to take consent. After that, you have to expose. At least from umbilicus to mid thigh, you have to expose. Then carefully look. Are there any scarring in the inguinal region? Number one, consent. Then carefully look for the scar. If you see scar in the inguinal region, very close to your lung, here, it may indicate recurrence. It may indicate recurrence of hernia. It may indicate recurrence. Then carefully look, what is the shape of lung? It may be globular in shape. Or it may be society in shape, it may be globular in shape or society in shape. Your indirect inguinal hernia arising from the deep inguinal ring, then travel through the inguinal canal, then merge through the superficial inguinal ring, then it looks like sausage. Your indirect inguinal hernia looks like sausage. Your direct inguinal hernia arising from weaker lower abdominal wall. Then it look like globule. Your direct inguinal hernia look like globule and your indirect inguinal hernia look like sausage. If you see sausage type lump in the inguinal region, most probably it can be an indirect inguinal hernia. Next one, cough. Ask your patient to cough. <coughs> With that, what happened? It increased intra-abdominal pressure. Your lump will be more prominent. You can see lump come and go, come and go with the cough. Lump impulse you can see. Cough impulse you can see. Impulse. Impulse come with cough. Cough impulse. You can see it visible. Not only visible, if you keep your hand in the inguinal region, you can feel it as well. So, hand bubble. There is a cough impulse which can be visible and palpable if it is a inguinal hernia. So, visible and palpable cough impulse is there. Cough impulse is there. Not only that, some small lump become more prominent with the cough. Sometimes there will be a very small one. With the superimposition, you may not be able to see it properly. With the cough, wow, it will appear. Still, you can't lump, see the lump. Then what I going to do? Ask your patient to stand up. Then it will be more prominent. Then go. Then it will be more and more prominent. If it is not still visible, ask your patient to stand up and see. Then try to identify whether it is direct or indirect. Whether this hernia, direct inguinal hernia or indirect inguinal hernia. Now you have rough idea. So set shape one must be indirect. But you want to confirm it. Ask your patient to reduce the hernia. Most of the patient can reduce hernia himself into the abdominal cavity. If your patient can't, ask from your examiner, shall I reduce it? Then he says, okay, then you try to reduce it. Once you reduce, what are you going to do? Then you have to identify the pubic tubercle. Pubic tubercle and anterior superior iliac spine. Pubic tubercle and anterior superior iliac spine. Then identify midpoint of pubic tubercle and anterior superior iliac spine. Your inguinal ligament run from anterior superior iliac spine to pubic tubercle. You have to identify the midpoint of inguinal ligament. Here, then one centimeter above the midpoint of inguinal ligament is the site where you are deep inguinal ring situator. Deep inguinal ring situated somewhere here. Now you reduce lump already. Then keep your hand, thumb in the deep inguinal ring. Then ask your patient to cough. If you can control lump with the pressure on the deep inguinal ring, it is indirect inguinal hernia. If you can't control, 
If you can't control that mean lump come somewhere here, it is direct internal hernia. If you can control lump with the thumb in the deep inguinal ring, that is indirect inguinal hernia. If you can't, that is direct inguinal hernia. There is another way to identify the deep inguinal ring. You have to identify the inguinal ligament. Then check for the femoral pulse. Here your femoral artery. Femoral pulse somewhere here on top of the inguinal ligament. Then one centimeter above the femoral pulse. Both places are same. Deep inguinal ring. Now you can identify whether it is direct or indirect. Next one. External and external genitalia. Sometimes there can be associated pyomosis. There can be other scrotal lump. This area is now look like neglected. Why in the lump you can't do the activities. Now this area is neglected. So there can be pyomosis. There can be other scrotal lump. Next one. Check other side and check for the vetrosis. There can be more prominent side and less prominent side. Ask your patient to stand up. Then ask cough. <coughs> With that, non-prominent small valve also you can clearly see. Not only that, vertical is also more prominent when you are standing. You can identify the other side lump and vertical Now you finish your examination. Thanks to your patient. Then going to present. This patient having globular shaped lump in the right inguinal region. It has both visible and expansile of impulse. Lump can be completely reduced and cannot control by applying pressure over the deep inguinal ring. He has got no coexisting scrotal lump or pyomosis. Contralateral growing is normal. So my probable diagnosis is left side direct inguinal hernia. I would like to offer him surgery under spinal anesthesia. That is how you are going to present. At, in, at the end of the presentation, examiner will ask few questions from you. How do you differentiate direct and indirect inguinal hernia? Now you know. If you can control the lump with the pressure over the deep inguinal ring, it is indirect. Otherwise, it is direct. Next one. What are what is the importance of it? What are the importance of it? What are the importance of knowing whether it is direct or indirect? Unfortunately, there is no importance. You can complicate the medical students. That is the only importance. Next one. What are the landmarks to differentiate during the surgery? During the surgery, you are going to open inguinal, just above the inguinal ligament. From here to here. You can see the inferior epigastric artery. If your lump rises lateral to the inferior epigastric artery, it is indirect inguinal hernia. Medial to the inferior epigastric artery, it is direct inguinal hernia. That is how you are going to do, differentiate during the surgery. Next one. What are the treatment options? What are the treatment options? You can do mesh repair. You can reduce the hernia sac and apply mesh over here and attach to the subcutaneous tissue. That is called mesh repair. That is the gold standard. Or you can do tissue repair. Patient own tissue like conjoint tendon going to attach into inguinal ligament and try to reduce the lump. That kind of tissue repair and mesh repair you can do. Those are the treatment options. Next one, what is herniotomy and what is herniorepi? Herniotomy means you are going to remove the hernia sac. Herniotomy means you are going to remove the hernia sac. Herniorepi means you are not going to remove the hernia sac. You are going to push it into back and we are going to repair it. Only repair. Next one, what are the etiological factors for hernia? What are the etiological factors? Chronic cough, chronic cough, constipation, those are going to increase in abdominal pressure. Benign prosthetic hyperplasia, while you are urinating, you increase in abdominal pressure. Cigarette smoking, your tryptase activity increase, tryptase activity increase, it will break down collagen and anterior abdominal wall become weak. So those are the etiological factors. What are the complications of hernia? It can obstruct. Obstruct. It can non-reducible. 
non reducible you can't reduce it it is there other one is it can strangle it obstruction non reducible strangulation some bowel segment can be there incarceration incarceration those are the complications of hernia what are the complications of surgery your patient can develop pain following surgery pain hematoma formation urine retention sometimes stomatic cord and vessels can damage so skin opacities infection there can be recurrence those are the complications those are the complications next one what is the recurrence rate with the menstrual pair it is the external surgery it can is less than 1% recurrence with menstrual pair that is all regarding your Thank you very much.